Welcome everyone to this uh, uh, webinar on how to enhance your Jupyter Notebooks with Visual Workflows, that is how to use Jupyter Notebooks together with Nine. Um, before we actually start and I give the word to Monty, I would like to give you a few house rules. So you should know that uh, you should use the Q&A section as much as you want also to vote other people questions. The session is being right now recorded and it's going to be available afterwards on, uh, um, on YouTube. And uh, we will send an email after this webinar ends with all those links to the slides, to the promo codes, to the videos. So do not worry if uh, uh, you won't get them right away. An email will be coming. All right, next slide, please. So how do you actually get to use the Q&A? Zoom has this button uh, here at the bottom, and you can select the Q&A uh, button to actually, uh, to actually uh, type your questions and vote them and so on. And we will answer all the questions at the end of our webinar, since there is lots of stuff we want to show to you. So uh, next slide, please. And here we go, we start. Welcome everyone. Uh, I'm myself, uh, Paolo Tamanini. I work as a data scientist and I'm in the evangelism team, as well as Monty. And uh, uh, Monty, uh, stage is all yours. And uh, please go ahead. Hello everyone. So uh, as Paolo introduced, so today we're going to talk about Jupyter Notebooks and how we can integrate, integrate them in Nine and the vice versa. So the agenda is twofold. Firstly, we'll uh, quickly discuss about Jupyter Notebooks and Nine. And in the second part, we'll uh, look at the quick demo and what uh, packages are need to be installed into your system so that you can uh, use this integration and play along. So the demo follows after this. Uh, talking about Jupyter Notebooks, I hope you all are aware with what Jupyter Notebooks are and why are they so famous in the industry? Mostly because you can integrate plots, equations, images, videos, uh, and you can share these notebooks with your clients or with your teammates, and then they can add a part of code and then send it back to you and which is called rapid prototyping, which basically this makes Jupyter Notebooks quite famous in uh, data scientist career or you know everyday life. If you want to read more about why Jupyter uh, and how to use them, you can follow the reference link, which is provided over here. Now I'll talk about the installation. Uh, there are two ways you can install Jupyter Notebook. The first one is that as I'm assuming you have the standard Python so you can uh, open the command prompt and type in this command, which is pip install Jupyter, and then Jupyter Notebook will be installed to your system. But in case you have installed Python via Anaconda package, which is uh, that if you install this Anaconda package, it uh, def by default installs Python and all the important libraries that you need for doing data science. And that is why Jupyter Notebook will be installed with it. So in my case, I have installed Anaconda package on my system. And that is why I get a uh, Jupyter notebook inbuilt. And if you want to know more about how to install them, you can follow the reference links. And I think now Paula will give yeah, you an Yeah, so um, we give a quick introduction about the Nine Jupyter uh, notebook, I mean, Jupyter notebook, but we should also introduce a bit Nine uh, for the ones of you that uh, didn't come across of it yet. And it's an idea of, it's also that that's the interesting part. It's uh, also open source and free to download. For the most part, this comes as the Nime Analytics platform, a desktop tool, which we will show later, is basically a way that you can drag and drop to do data science. You can still code, but no coding is required. So you access your data, you transform it, you build your model, you visualize them, all the data science parts within a user-friendly tool. Now, what's also interesting is that there are so many extensions that you can install from the main analytics platform to cover all the different aspects of the data science. 
But once you want to deploy something, that's when Nime Server comes in, our commercial offering. You move the workflow that you build with Nime Analytics platform to Nime Server, and that is uh, maybe installed on the cloud, maybe installed on premises. It doesn't matter. You can have a safe way to deploy things easily uh, and also to have your team collaborating. So using creating REST API and web portal, uh, web-based application, as well as simply having a repository where people can share their work with permissions and so on. Next slide, please. So how does Nine works? You have those nodes. Each node is actually having a particular function on, uh, um, on what you want to do. In this case, you can see you're a group by node, data goes in, there is some aggregation with some settings that the user uh, define and the data goes out. If you use one single node, it's, uh, it's uh, just a node, but when you have many nodes, you have a workflow and that's in the end what defines your <clears throat> data science um, uh, analysis. So in this case, we are really an Excel, we are coloring by row, we are partitioning between train and test set, then we have a decision tree learner, a decision tree predictor, and so on. You build your analysis like this, it's user friendly, it's also easy to be but also easy to share, right? You show a Jupyter notebook to someone, it's not for granted that he has an understanding of what's going on. Also, workflows can be complicated, but with all these uh, labels and annotations, it can become quite transparent. Now, this, the third element that I would like to, to tell you about, about Nine are components. So you take a workflow, you package it in a component. From the outside, it looks just like a node, but inside, you have more nodes. And this will give a Nine user a possibility to package things in a reusable way that eyes on the complexity. You have the settings of the component, which control the execution of the workflow inside, and this will make it even more uh, easy to share and to build complex things with Nine um, that anyone can reuse. Now, please go next. Here to show you exactly how Nine works. Uh, this is a quick video. This is the Nine Analytics platform uh, for a churn prediction model. So you can see here that we are dragging in the data. Uh, uh, we start by having this uh, uh, template with lots of annotations that you can always customize and add to nine. And uh, we are here uh, dragging in some contract data to predict church. So we drag in the CSV, the file reader gets added, we click OK, and then we see that uh, the, um, the output of the node is actually uh, can be open at any time to see the data. Then here we are dragging in an Excel uh, file. So an Excel reader is being added to the workflow and we keep on going like this, every time configure, open the output to see how the data looks like. Monty, can you go up it? Yes, please just click there. So you can see here uh, how the workflow is getting built at the end. You have way more workflow, way more nodes, and you keep on dragging and adding them and connecting them until you, you created your uh, data analysis. Okay, so next. So uh, just, we have many nodes uh, developed by uh, nine itself, and uh, some of those also integrate with other libraries, right? So we we can all we are always open to integrate with other open source tools when we can, or simply with other platform when this is possible. So you can connect with other kind of data sources, like for example, a popular example is to connect to uh, Twitter uh, API to get uh, the tweet data. But there are so many others. Then we have. Uh, platforms to visualize your data, like, like Power BI, Tableau, then of course you can code in Nime as well, so R and Python, and you can also connect to your, uh, whatever distributed environment you have access to, you can execute things there, and, and this will make it, of course, the computation faster. Now, least but not last, machine learning libraries. Those can be, uh, there are many open source libraries that you use in Python, but as well as many other languages. So we integrate it with them and the CAD, TensorFlows, H2O are a good example of that, but there are also many others. Uh, I think we are a good point and next. All right, so this is the scenario right now. I'm building a classification model using nine and Monty wants to use my model in his Jupyter notebook. So that is to next go from Jupyter and in Jupyter execute a nine workflow. How we are going to do this? 
uh, back to you, Monty. Yeah. So as you see in this scenario, uh, Paulo likes working in NIME and he has created workflows there. And I want to use the classification model built in a NIME in my Jupyter Notebooks. So uh, the solution we are going to provide in steps so that you know stepwise how to build this. In the first step, we are building the training and the deployment workflows. At this point of time, I like to switch to NIME analytics platform so that I can provide you all the details. So this is the training workflow that is developed by Paulo. And it's simple. If you uh, look at the blocks, there are three blocks here. The first block is responsible for reading data and pre-processing. This block takes care of training the model and the last block is for evaluation. The data set that we're going to use for this demo is the airline data set. And uh, I think this is the famous airline data set because uh, every row represents information regarding flight. And these are all the different attributes of the flight or features that we call them. Uh, like when was the, what was the date of the flight, then the origination of the flight, destination of the flight. And at last we have the column uh, which is called class and which tells us whether the flight was delayed or not. So in this activity, the classification model will try to predict whether the flight will be delayed or not based on all these features. Now, this is an interactive column filter that is built by NIME team. And the input to this component is the target column, which is class. That whether the flight is delayed or not, that's the target column here. And now if I open the interactive view, I can have a descriptive information regarding which columns I should choose for my classification. As you can see here, the feature names then the overall re column relevance. Now this relevance tells us that how important is this column in the classification task based on its correlation with the target or the noise it has, the constant value or the missing values. Now this interactive slider, which we have here, if I move it, I can set the threshold that I want to use. If I set the threshold to 86%, uh, then I can see only three features will be selected. And if I lower it a little bit, then more features. So I can set this threshold according to my preference. And if I use my domain knowledge and I want to exclude some columns uh, like flight number, I don't want to use flight numbers. I can click here and then close and apply. So in this way, I can do feature selection, which is using relevance or manual. Then we have the partitioning, which is the classical example, classical node, which used in machine learning for training, uh, for dividing the data into train, train set and test set. So we're dividing the data 70% into train part and the rest 30% for testing. We are learning the decision train, uh, we are learning the decision tree over uh, the 70% data. Then we are using it for predicting on the test set using this predictor node. And then we have binary classification inspector, which tells us the evaluation of this model which is basically the AUC score or the accuracy. The accuracy that I get over here is 73% and the AUC is around 53. And I'm satisfied with this model as of now. So I like to write this model to a specific location using the model writer. So this is all about the training part. Now I have to build a deployment workflow so that I can use this model. And the deployment workflow is as simple as it looks here. Uh, it has the reading data. That means the data that will come through this, uh, come to this workflow. Then we have the predictor, which will predict whether the flight is delayed or not. And this is the model reader. It, it reads the model that the training data has returned to a specific location. And then at last we have the container output table, which stores the prediction. Now in this workflow, the important parts are the container input and output table, because this will enable the Jupyter notebooks to send data inside the workflow and the container output table will enable us to send the prediction out of this uh, workflows to the Jupyter notebooks. So I'd like to come back to the slides and I can see that the step one is completed. We have built the workflows. Now step two. For step two, we need to install the latest NIME package, which is as simple as 
going to your command prompt or anaconda prompt. In my case, I'm going to the anaconda prompt because I installed it via anaconda. Yes. And the command here is pip install install nine and then enter. So I already have this package in my system. So it says requirement satisfied. Now, why do we need this package is because uh, this package makes sure that Jupyter can uh, point to nine workflows, can execute them, can send data to them. So consider it as a type of connection. So we are establishing a connection using this. At this point of time, uh, in step one, we completed the workflows. Now we also established the connection. So in step three, we like to move towards Jupyter and start coding. So going to the Jupyter notebooks, this is the notebook that we are going to use for the demo today. And I hope you all are well aware with the UI of Jupyter notebooks. So first I like to import the libraries that I need today uh, for this prediction. First I need pandas, which is used for data manipulation, then matplotlib, which is used for plotting and then nine, basically the connection library. So I just have to set up these three variables or the workspace, and then I can run any nine workflows here. First of all, I have to provide the nine dot executable path. That means the nine dot exe path on your system. In my case, I have kept it on desktop and that's why the path points towards desktop nine dot exe. Then whenever you open nine uh, analytics platform, you are asked about workspace. So you have to name the workspace and then you can create different workflows inside your workspace. So I had named the workspace as AP 4.2 and then I created training workflows. So I'm, I'm just giving the path of the workspace as well as the workflows. That's it, just three things I have to specify. And now my workspace is set up. Now the last command over here, which is nine dot workflow and path and workspace path. This, work, this command makes sure it, that it prints the image of the workflow. And why is it necessary? Because now I know that Jupyter is pointing towards the right workflow. Now, as here you can see, I'm pointing towards training and printing this, I get the training workflow that we just saw in Nine Analytics platform. So I'm sure that this is exactly what I wanted. But as you can see here, it does not have the container input or output. That is why I have to move towards the deployment workflow. And to call the deployment workflow, what I do is I simply go to uh, the, I simply provide the deployment workflow path and then look at the image. And yes, I see it's pointing toward the right deployment workflow. So at this point of time, we got the workflow as well. Now we just have to send data, how to send data of to nine. So first of all, uh, I'm importing a local data set, which is on my system here, which its name is external data set. Uh, I'm reading it using pandas. Then I'm looking at the first five rows just to see if I have all the features that I need for predicting whether a flight will be delayed or not. And I see I have all of them. Now, this is the essential step because it is here that you're sending data to nine and uh, just simple commands. First is with nine dot workflow, you provide the workflow specifications like the path and the workspace as WF, then you provide the input. This input will go to the container input table. And as we see that this should be the data set because I want to predict on this data set. And this is the standard input name that we use that is data table inputs. And that is why uh, whenever you code, you have to put WF dot data table inputs and index zero because our workflow has only one input. In case I had multiple input containers, I could go with index one, two, three, four, and they're on. That's it now. I have given the data set and I write wf.execute. That means it will execute my workflows. But to, uh, there is one tip here or the caution which, should, which you should always follow. That is you to make sure that the workflow that you want to run from Jupyter should be closed or it shouldn't be open in Nine Analytics platform. Now I'm back uh, to my code and I'll just execute it. 
now to show how it works so at this point of time when i execute it this call this 9.exe calls that workflow and sends data executes it gets data from there and it's back and the, and the predictions are back to jupiter now if you look at it it looks like it takes some time but it's because it's opening a new instance and which is why you should always close the workflow because if it was open then this instance would fail saying that it is being used somewhere and as you saw it was a successful execution now i want to look at uh, the output so the, the output will always be stored in wf.table output that's the standard output variable and at index 0 because we just have one output container if we had multiple output containers then we could uh, reference them using index 1 2 3 4 and i would like to look at a sample now we have already seen all these features but if you see at the last i get three prediction columns the one is uh, no delay and delay and then the class prediction class no delay and all these things so isn't it awesome that uh, this was the model trained by polo but i'm able to use it in jupiter to predict on the data set that i have here again uh, if i want to look at the uh, evaluation of this model in jupiter i can as well look at the roc curve and i see that the roc curve is giving around 0.72 is the auc uh, and another thing that i want to stress here is that even i can build my models in jupiter but when i had to compare them with with polo's model the performance i had no clue earlier but now because of this integration i can build model here build model here and then compare it with polo's model using by bringing the nime workflows here and then comparing the performance using rocs or aucs or accuracy further we also look at the predictions distributions as well as the confusion matrix and then if you don't like this you can further tune it in nime and again bring it here so i think this is the best collaboration regarding nime and uh, jupiter so that we all, that i and polo can work together and train models i know this was a bit a simple example but i would like to show uh, th the same example but with better components so recently nine analytics uh, nine has released the automl component uh, as you can see in the training one we had to do so many steps like the pre processing then training the model and the evaluation but with the current automl component uh as you can see you are just connecting the data set the airline data set to the automel component and we have several options in the dialog first is which columns that you want to choose for the classification task then the models that you need as you can see there are plenty of models here and we have model for h2o model as well deep learning keras xgboost all the complex as well as the simple models together and then i specify the target class once i provide all this and you can see inside this component that it builds the data prep on its own where you have missing value analysis normalization and in the auto ml learner you can see all these models are trained parallelly on the data set uh including decision tree random forest and then the keras at the end and then all these models are predicted or scored on the test data set and then the best model is written outside now i like to show you uh how the in, uh, performance panel looks like so the performance panel of auto ml shows that in this data set of airline xgboost is is the best that means in in case of accuracy this is the model that perform that outperformed all the other models and thanks to integrated deployment uh that we can directly write the deployment workflow using the auto ml component so at this point i can write this deployment uh workflow using a deployment writer to a specific location and i like to show the deployment workflow this is how the deployment work workflow looks like now it has the in container input the output and as i mentioned auto ml takes care of all the uh, pre processing which is normalization missing value or not encoding and then also as i showed you in the performance panel that xgboost was the one that outperformed so that predictor is available here in the deployment workflow and then we have the post processing where we denormalize the features again 
and the predictions are stored in the container output table. Uh, as we already discussed, for this workflow to work in Jupyter, I just need these two nodes, input container and container output. I have this. So now, can I use this AutoML components deployment directly in Jupyter? Yes. How to do it? So I have a sim I have the similar notebook that I shared in the previous activity, but I would like to go through it quickly. So here as well, we import libraries, then the nine path workspace path, then here instead of other workflows, I'll take the AutoML deployment and then I check if it is the right uh, if, uh, workflow that I'm importing. Yeah, it's the right one. Then I take a local data set, then I execute it using the same thing, uh, closing it over there, executing. Then I look at the predictions that I get and I can see again, nice predictions. But the thing is, if I look at the ROC curve here, you can see it has gone to 0.9994. Uh, I think that's the best ROC I can get with this model. So as you can see, this auto ML has brought down the complexity of your work because you just connect it with the data set and you get the best model and you can use it in Jupyter directly without even training different models here. Um, so I think we have covered step three and step four here. And now the scenario. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Monty. So um was busy answering all those questions. There's so many questions. All right. So now there is the second scenario. Let's say that Monty is the one that is actually performing really beautiful scripts that I want to use in I, right? So I want to use his Jupyter notebook as I go through my workflow in I. So click next. You see that I'm building something in I. And in there, I want to do the opposite of before I run from nine, I'll code in a Jupyter. So back to you, Mati. Yeah. So as Paulo mentioned in this scenario that uh, I'm doing some feature transformations, which is basically applying math transformations on the features. And Paulo wants to use these transformations in the, his nine workflows. So how to do that? So basically the answer is, integrate the Jupyter notebook inside your nine workflows, and then you can run it. So again, here I'll take the step-by-step -step approach. I'll proceed with the initial step, which is to make sure that your nine analytics platform has the Python integration or the Python extension. For that, you can go to uh, file, install nine extensions and type Python. And this is the results that you will get click on the nine Python integration and just next, it will be installed to a system. If you want, if you believe in drag and drop, then directly go to this link and then you can just drag it to your nine analytics platform. And this extension will be installed to your nine, nine analytics platform. The next step is setting up the Python environment. So, uh, as we seen that when we go to, uh, in the initial, uh, uh, in the initial demo, I was showing you, you, you need the nine package so that nine can, uh, Jupyter can connect on uh, nine and all. But here uh, you have to set up a Python environment because your codes that you write in Jupyter are in, are in Python language and it needs a Python environment. So I like to show you how to do that. If I am, now I'm back to my nine Analytics platform, go to file and then preferences. Here I'm going to nine and then python once you are here it will detect on its own what version of python you have so i had python 3 and 3.6.12 that's the package name uh, sorry that's the version name and it has detected that now now it now all i have to do is create an environment so just go and create new environment i prefer creating new environment for new projects and going to new environment it will ask you to enter the environment name you can enter any name that you want and just click create environment this will create a new python environment for your nine analytics platform but i had already created it for this project so i'm going to use the py3 conda underscore one apply and close that's it now my uh nine analytics platform has python uh 
Python uh, environment installed. Now I'll be back to the next step. So this was the step one where we set up Python environment using the variable component, uh, using the environment name. Now I move towards creating function in Jupyter. So this is how my Jupyter notebook looks like. I'm importing the libraries that I need. Then I'm making a custom transformation function where a data set is given as input to this function. Then I apply three transformations, as you can see here. The first transformation is applied to the feature at index one, which is a exponential transform. The second one is multiply by two. And the third one is square root transform. Once I apply all these transformations, I add these features to the existing data set and that becomes my output. So it is important to have a function in your Jupyter notebook so that nine workflows can directly use this function to send data and get the output. That is why I emphasize you guys to have a function so that it, could, it can be used in nine. And now we're going to step three, which is again building the workflow where you can use the Jupyter notebooks. For this point, I like to go back again to Nine Analytics platform. So this is the uh, workflow that we're going to use to demonstrate how Jupyter can be integrated. And this is the workflow which is similar to the existing ones that I showed you in the previous demo. We are reading data here, then the training and the evaluation. But as you can notice, there are two new things. One is this block and one is this node that is a Python script node. So as the name says, so this Jupyter notebook path, this provides uh, the notebook location on your system. Uh, and this Python script node, it's responsible for running the Jupyter notebook. Now, if I just double click on this and here I'm supposed to choose, choose where is my notebook and I can choose it from any location, but I already given the location here and it's run Jupyter in nine and I click open and it is here and it is already what I had chosen. So once the location is here, we do some string manipulation to strip off some uh, strings which were not useful, like the file underscore something. So at last I can see in my flow variables, I have this flow, I have these four variables. The, the second one is the file name, which is run Jupyter in nine. And the path to Jup is the variable that consists of the location that where this file is on my system, the Jupyter notebook. Now let's move towards the Python script node. I'm going to open the configuration window for this, which is by double clicking. And as you can see, whatever you supply from the table data to here, that is the input, you can see all the columns in here and the flow variables that I gave from here, that is the notebook location path can all be seen here. And this central window, it's for coding or uh, writing your code and then executing it here. And again here, a setup is important so that you can run any Jupyter notebook. The first thing is the notebook location and this notebook location, I already have the flow variable so I can make it point to path to Jupyter flow variable. It will get the location. The notebook name, I have the file name flow variable from here. So it will get the a file name of the notebook. After this, the notebook directory, which is just a combination of notebook location and notebook name. Once these three things are set up, then you have to load the notebook. I would say this is an important part here, loading the notebook, because once you load the notebook into this variable, now this script or this node knows that the notebook is here and it has read all the different functions in the notebook. So the command goes like this, 9 load notebook and then the directory and the notebook name. So till here we have loaded the notebook now. Now we want to use the function which was called as custom transformation. So my notebook dot custom transformation, it is the function. And as we know, this function needs a data set. So we are providing the input table. Now, uh, input table is the standard name for whatever comes in from here. That is why we use input table and output table is the standard name for the variable that goes as output from here. So whatever you store in output table will be an output from 
this uh, this node's output so i can now execute the script here and see that the execution is successful that means now i can execute this node but if it is not successful you'll get error message just like the jupyter notebook or python environment and you can trace back which line it is pointing to okay now i will execute it and as per the jupyter notebook we all expect that we should have the three columns added into the data set the exponential one and the other transforms so i'll look at the output and if i move towards right i can see the three columns the first one is exponential then it's multiply by two column and then the square root column so isn't it great guys that i had i'm coding everything in jupyter and paulo has just integrated this in his nine and i can change this transformations i can multiply by four six but paulo won't have to bother about it he just has to make sure that it's integrated here and he can run all his uh, evaluation so now using this new features if you look at the performance it will take a couple of minutes and then you can see the performance window uh, and you see the accuracy is a bit high now 0.94 so i and polo together are able to develop great models by using simplistic workflows and the feature transformation from jupiter so this was one of the example you could try many after this even uh, polo tried this one which is that i have this uh, i mean up till now you've seen that we mostly train models in nime and then push them to jupiter for prediction but this is a bit different here the model is trained in jupiter and it is saved as a pickle file and as you are well aware of what a pickle file is it's a serialized uh, encoding so the model is saved as a serialized encoding and we have a uh, pick, use pickle model code which is that it takes the input data set and the model file name which is the pickle file name and it will predict whether the flight is delayed or not so coming back to this workflow uh, as you can see we are we have we have the airline data set here we are doing the missing value and we are having a column filter because the model that we trained in jupiter it takes only the numerical columns or the integer columns that is why we just have the integer columns and the delayed which is the target so this is the component that we created and it takes two things as input one is the jupiter notebook and other is a pickled model so this jupiter notebook that i just uh, that i just showed you it uses this pickled model for prediction so the model is entirely out of nine it is pickled and the jupiter notebook uses it and once i click i mean i have already executed it and if you look at the output of it you can see that at last you have a prediction column where it shows how the different columns uh, different rows are predicted that whether the flight will be delayed or not based on these features so and then we have this scorer which will also let us score and see how the confusion matrix looks like similar to what we have seen earlier so this is this is what we wanted to show you that anything is possible between nime and jupiter you just have to make sure uh, that you have a function when you are bringing in jupiter notebook and the nime workflow has the input and output uh, containers so that you can send data from there and this is where i co we covered step 3 step 4 which was the providing important variable notebooks and the function name and now i think paul will talk about 94.3 uh thank you monty for adding this uh, uh really uh, detailed that like if you follow this webinar and you want to get started with any of the two approach i think you have every tiny detail from the installation of jupyter notebook all the way to integrating it with nine so right now i just want to give you a sneak preview this is only a um um part of what's coming so uh, you should know that in december we are going to release 94.3 and with 94.3 many um different uh, improvements are going to come to the connection between 
Python N9. But uh, I think it's important to highlight this one because it's really related to our webinar, which is the feature of actually executing, just like we were doing now, the, uh, a workflow from Jupyter Notebook, just that this workflow, it's not sitting around in your machine in a workspace and it's not calling your NIME uh, analytics platform execution, but it's calling it the NIME server itself. What does this mean? It means that a coworker anywhere can deploy the workflow on NIME server, and then you can anywhere else just connect to the server and execute it. And I think this is a really nice way for someone to deploy easily uh, a workflow and any other data scientist with Python, for example, being able to call it this way. Oh, of course, this is the Python examples, but uh, it's, I think it's a really nice use case to show. And again, it's, come, it's not yet released. It's going to come out uh, soon, uh, this uh, before Christmas. So uh, next slide, please. All right, so this is just a couple of remarks before we start the Q&A session. We have many questions that we need to answer to. So uh, there is the blog. You can find many other resources, blog posts about Jupyter, about the integration and so on. There is the forum. So if you're a Python user, the forum for nine users is a bit like uh, having uh, people answering to your issues. So you can find already the answer that you're looking for there in the nine forum because someone already did it there. It's a forum. Then we have the nine hub where you can find all the nodes and uh, extension and example workflow um, that we uh, share publicly. And uh, also they are shared by the community. A few of those community members are part of this webinar. So um, also make sure to go there to find what they're working on. And then we also have the learning course, a, a series of YouTube videos to learn how to use time. We reached the end of our webinar and now we are ready for questions. So next again, and uh, thanks and Q&A session. Now uh, for me and Monty, uh, there are many questions now. So maybe I read them through and uh, you, you answer some of them, Monty? Uh, yeah, sure, Paulo. All right, uh, yeah. so let's get started. All right, so someone is asking, can you set up the container input node table in detail? So when you, you created a deployment workflow, Monty, did you configure this container input and output or did you just drag it in and connect them and it was done right away? Uh, I just dragged in and connected it, that's it. Okay, so there is no special configuration to be as was asking. There, you just drag it in, connect, done. And, yeah, and you're that's good. it. And the only requirement is that the thing that you pass from uh, Jupyter should be a Pandas data frame or a dictionary. Right. So it, it, it needs to have a, a Python uh, object that is able to recognize once. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay, cool. All right. So this is a, maybe I'll try to answer it. Only Jupyter or actually working on Zeppelin, which is a notebook on Spark that allows to switch and mix in between Python, R, Spark, Scala, and Java in a single workflow. Uh, I'm not uh, understanding the question correctly, but if you're asking if you can from a Jupyter notebook, execute a workflow, which is also having nodes executing Python R, we have also Spark nodes and so on, you can also do that, right? It's, uh, it's only the matter of what name is executing there. So um, if that was the question, of course, from a Jupyter notebook, executing a name workflow that is connected to many other integrations of name, you can really connect all of those things together. So that was Olaf. Olaf, if I didn't answer your question, please, type on it again the question so that maybe I'm able uh, to understand in detail. Um, Giuseppe Tirone. So this is which extension do I need for the AutoML node? Oh, wow, many extension we use there, Monty, right? Can you yep. remember a few maybe? Uh, I think if you just drag the component, it will suggest you that which are all the extensions needed and you can just install them. Right, that's what I would suggest. You go on app.9.com, find the AutoML component, page and then you drag and drop it just so it would be your node repository and then all the extensions you would need they would be automatically installed i think it's integrated deployment keras h2o because we're training a bunch of different things there as well as maybe some also other like plotly maybe i don't remember right now yes maybe the machine learning interpretability extension as well all right 
Uh, while uh, uh, Monty is uh, covering this, I always, okay, so we are almost, whoa, it's, we are a bit behind. All right. So yeah, you drag and drop it from here and it should install it. Fabian uh, is asking, can you assign a workflow, a specific environment? So if I execute workflow X, Y, Z, I want to decorate it for an environment. This is a cool question, right? This is coming with 4.3. Yeah. Right? Yes. This is coming now in December with a future release of nine, we plan to have a way that you can deploy with the workflow also the conda environment that is needed to execute the workflow, which is using Python. So definitely that's a good question and it's coming with a future release. So thank you, Fabian. Uh, Shtek is asking, can we install this workflow on Google Colab? So I think that if you can install this Python uh, package, the 9Py package on your Google Go Lab uh, Python environment. And then from there, maybe it's better to call, once it's possible with a new release, a 9 server workflow. But if you're able to have in the same machine also a 9 analytics platform installed, it could theoretically also work there. So definitely. Um, Panas, can we have multiple inputs and outputs in the functions? Remember the uh, Monty, uh, this part of the new Python node coming out with the release? Yep, so uh, even this is part of the December release. So one node can have multiple inputs and multiple outputs. And as of now, 4.2 supports a node with only one input and one output. So we are going to make that node dynamic in one. Right. Node. So you were going to have, it's super cool, you're going to have a dot next to this Python snippet and you're going to be able to add more input ports and output ports. So you don't need to every time have a different Python snippet node if you want to change the type of uh, uh, input and output. I think this is going to be uh, super cool when it's happening. Yeah. We're a bit behind time. So many questions are adding. <laughs> um, Stop sharing, so maybe we don't show this anymore. So okay. is it possible to run the Jupyter Notebook on a powerful server remotely to pull the results from here into the local nine workflow? Uh, yeah, I think this is uh, whatever you want to install Jupyter Notebook. We, uh, there are many services that are available to do this. So. Um, you can definitely execute Jupyter Notebook somewhere else, but this is really not the nine job. The nine job is more about what you're executing on. So you should look at what are there, the possibility to uh, run Jupyter Notebook on a powerful, maybe cloud system, but nine doesn't provide this part. Um, are you able to share the example of Jupyter Workbook with a follow-up email? Yes, they, will, they are already on Dropbox. I use the chat to share them with you. All the notebooks are in there. Uh, the idea of using Jupyter instead of Zeppelin, uh, we will maybe all have a uh, follow up with an email because I need to look better about what uh, Zeppelin does exactly. But it should be possible, I believe. If it's running Python, then it's only a Python script, so it should work. Okay, so Panis, last two questions. Can you explain briefly the pickle model use case a bit more time allows? I feel that maybe you can ask in the nine forum or comment below the word from nine map. I will answer there because we're a bit out of time. Sorry, Panis. And, and yeah, to combine to pandas data frame in the function, this is maybe something that we can do with a new webinar after the release, all right? So I, I see that we had many questions, many people attending. So probably this is going to be repeated with a new nine release. And until then, uh, well, thank you for joining. And uh, maybe if you have one more question, we will get one more question that is not requesting a live demo, please. And so we will maybe a question for Monty. Otherwise, I think we will reach the end of the presentation. Nice presentation, thanks. All right, so this is now requesting live demo and I guess it's a nice, uh, uh, but uh, anything you would like to add Monty before we go offline? Uh, I think I can just show the nine uh, where they can find this workflows on IMO. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yep. 
Um, so guys, if you want this workflows, we are going to send it to you by mail, but these are also available on Nime Hub. Just go to hub.9 and there you can type Jupyter. And as you can see, the first work, the first research result is what I have made. You can click on my profile, go to uh, my space, the public one and you have the Jupyter webinar folder. If you just download this, you will get both the workflows. One is run Jupyter in nine and the other is run nine in Jupyter and all the data and the Python notebooks are inside these folders. So that's it from my end. All right. So yeah, again, this will be in the follow-up email and uh, it's already in Dropbox in the chat. So thank you for joining and uh, see you uh, in the next webinar. Bye.